Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video we'll be working on three little watercolour paintings using brush pens. All of these paintings are easy to paint and there's no sketching or lining, we're just going to be using the brush pens for today's video. You can follow along with the tutorial using any brand of water-based markers or brush pens that you have. I'll be using these from Arteza. This is not a sponsored video but Arteza did send me these pens along to try out and I thank them very much for supporting my channel. I think most of you know already about Arteza, I've used their products before on my channel in the past and they make affordable but really good quality art supplies. These brush pens have real brush nibs, they're not felt nibs, they, they act just like a paintbrush. They come in a wide variety of highly pigmented colours, they're very easy to blend with water and you can create lots of different watercolour effects with them. But as I said, you can use any brand you have on hand, so now let's get started. For the first painting, I'm starting out by taping down my square of 300 gram watercolour paper to a board. You can use washi tape, masking tape or painter's tape to do this. I usually use masking tape, but as I was out today when I filmed the video, I used a little washi tape instead. I'm just starting out by scribbling down some colour onto the paper. I'm not worrying about the colour skipping or not laying down smoothly. I will be liquefying and blending all the colours together later on. So for now, I just want to place colour onto the paper. I'm using a range of blues, purples and a black to create this galaxy background. I like to scribble the colours down evenly across the page, placing a little bit of black all over, and then a bit of blue, and then a bit of purple, and so on. I also try to scribble the colour in a bit of a diagonal line, instead of a circle, or a square, or a rectangle, I like to try and scribble it in a diagonal line. I find that this helps to make the finished painting more like a galaxy when everything is blended together. I'm overlapping the colour a little as well as I go and I'm trying to leave the light blue spots lighter and cluster the darker colours together and this will give the end painting more contrast later on. Once I have my colour down it's now time to blend everything together. I'm using a water brush here but you could also use a paintbrush and water instead. I'm squeezing the barrel of the water brush to get some bigger water droplets to fall onto the painting and then I'm just simply blending everything together with water. You want enough water on the page so that the colours move and blend together, but you don't want too much water or you'll wash all the colours away. I'm blending a little bit with the paintbrush as I go, but I do try to leave the colour alone a bit so that the colours don't move too much. I want everything to blend, but I still want all the colours to remain apart as well, so you can clearly see the different colours in the painting. Once I was finished blending, I took a little kitchen paper and dabbed up a little bit of the excess water and paint in the lighter areas of the galaxy. You can also use a kitchen towel to soak up any excess water as well. If you end up getting too much water onto your painting, you can just mop up any excess and if you end up just washing all your colour away, you just leave your painting to dry and then once it's all dry, go back in and add more colour and then re-wet and then you can keep going like that until you get a galaxy background that you're happy with. And that is the background finished. It only takes a few minutes and one layer of the pens to create this galaxy effect. I then brought out a Posca paint pen. You can use a white gel pen or white acrylic paint, white gouache, anything that you can get opaque white lines with will work fine and a, a white coloured pencil might also work quite well as well. And I just filled in the galaxy with snowflakes. I like to start by drawing four intercrossing lines as the starting point and then draw on the smaller lines and decorations from there. On some of the snowflakes I drew diamonds as decoration, circles or just simple little lines coming out from the larger ones. I also varied the size of the snowflakes as well across the painting. I drew several larger ones and then others in varying sizes. I also drew a few half off the page as well and then I added lots of little dots to the background and this is something that the Posca paint pens are very good at doing. I find the Posca paint pens are good at making all these tiny little dots. And that is the Snowflakes Galaxy painting. It's very simple to paint and it would also make a lovely holiday card or a gift as well. For painting number two, I'm again using a square of 300 gram watercolour paper and taping it down to my board. For this painting, I want to create a gradient sky, so I'm starting first by colouring a strip of dark blue at the top of the painting. I'm trying to lay down a fairly even layer of colour here, but I'm not worrying too much about the blending or lines in the colouring at this point. I felt that the blue was not quite dark enough, so I added a very thin layer of black right at the very top of the painting, 
just so that there would be that extra darkness right at the top of the gradient. I then took a slightly lighter blue and coloured a strip across the page under the, the first blue that I laid down and I like to overlap the two colours a bit as I go as well. Finally I added a tiny bit of an even lighter blue at the bottom of the colouring. I used four colours to create this gradient here but you could achieve a similar look by with just one colour or two colours and you can mix and match whatever colours you like and blend them together. Once the colouring was down I took a water brush and then I squeezed a bit of water out onto the painting and I started spreading the colour downwards going backwards and forwards across the page with my paintbrush. I also held the painting up so that the water could run easily down and I just kept going back and forth across the painting with the brush helping to blend and move the paint downwards. You will want to work fairly quickly when you do this and try not to go over the same place too many times with your brush otherwise you'll wash all the colour away. And once I had the gradient that I liked I used a kitchen towel to soak up any excess paint that was on the bottom of the painting and then I laid my paper down and left it to dry. Once it was dry I then went in with the black brush pen to create the landscape silhouette. You can easily do any sort of design that you like here. I doodled a few simple trees and a mountain range. When drawing the trees I tried to keep the branches of the trees in mind and I drew the silhouettes with tiny little strokes with the paintbrush so that there would be a few gaps in between the different branches and in between the different trees so that a little of the background would come through through the black silhouette. The last touch was to add an almost full moon to the sky and then dot a few stars here and there and I also added a little white highlight along the edge of the mountains and the trees just to make them pop a bit more. The white highlights are of course optional, you can adapt any of these paintings to suit your style and you can leave out any of the steps that you don't like. And that is the winter silhouette landscape finished. It's another fairly quick little painting and these gradient backgrounds are really fun to make for lots of different projects and you can choose any colours that you like and have a lot of fun making these gradient backgrounds. For the final painting I'll be creating a snowman but there's no sketching or line art required for this. We'll just be drawing three simple circles with the brush pen. I started first as always by taping down the paper and I am using the same four strips of washi tape throughout all of these paintings and that's something that's nice about washi tape when, you're, when you use it to mask your paintings. If you tear it up carefully you can easily reuse it again and again and get a lot of use out of the same four strips of tape. So once my paper was ready I used a light grey pen to roughly sketch in the largest circle. I made the line thicker on one side, this side will be where the main shadows are and then I made the line thinner on the other side of the circle and this is where the highlights will be. I then drew a slightly smaller circle on top of the bit larger one and then an even smaller circle on top of that so I had three stacked circles. And that is the body of the snowman and I made sure to keep the thicker lines on the same side on all three circles so that the shadows would all be on the same side. I then took a light blue brush pen and added a little bit of the blue colour into the grey shadowed areas and then blended everything together with the water brush. I didn't want the outlines to show so I blended the colour right to the very edge of the circle and liquefied the colour all the way round. Once that first layer was dry I then used the black pen to draw three half circles on the body of the snowman and these are like little crescent moon shapes and I drew one on the, the, the largest circle body and then two on the middle circle and I also added his top hat as well by drawing a line to represent the top of the hat brim and then another line to represent the top part of the hat. Using the water brush I then completed all the shapes and blended out the black colour by simply pulling the black outwards with the water brush to complete the circles and the hat. Working like this creates a shadow, a mid-tone and a highlight in all one go so it's a very effective way of colouring if you don't have a lot of time to sit down and work in multiple layers and it makes the painting look a little bit more dimensional. I then added two stick arms and then I worked on the ground under the snowman. I added a strip of purple across the painting and then added a little black to darken up the shadow under the snowman and then I simply blended the colour out and down to the base of the painting with the water brush. 
I did a similar step for the background, placing a little strip of light blue along the edge of the ground and then blending that colour upwards into the sky. As I had reused the washi tape from the two previous paintings, when I was painting the sky portion of the snowman painting, the, the, the brush was picking up some paint that was left on the washi tape and it gave the sky a very interesting two colour look in several places. I really liked this effect but if you don't like that make sure that you're, if you're reusing your washi tape that you just wipe the washi tape clean before you start your next painting in between paintings. One change you may want to make to this painting is to draw the snowman's arms after you've painted the background. I had to go very carefully around the arms so I didn't blend the back into the blue sky. So I would recommend that if you try out this painting, you do the background first and then add the arms in last after everything is dry. I think that would make the painting the background process easier. I then drew in the eyes, nose and mouth onto the snowman and then I darkened up some of the shadows on the body by colouring a little bit more grey and then blending that out. I also added a cane to one of the hands and then a few grasses along the ground with the black pen. The finishing touches were some white highlights to the ground and onto the body of the snowman and then the third painting was finished. So those are three little watercolour painting ideas using water-based brush pens. You could use watercolour paints if you'd preferred, but I do enjoy painting with these pens. They're very quick and easy to use and the colours are lovely. All of these paintings are fairly quick and simple to make and they're a nice project to work on during the winter months. Let me know which of these paintings you liked best and if you try any of them out make sure you tag me over on Instagram so I can see what you create. I really hope you enjoyed today's video tutorial. Have a creative week everyone and I will see you next time.